We're men, manly men, men in tights. Well, you band of miscreants, today I've got one that I've been looking forward to for a long time. We're gonna test men 556 55 grain full metal jacket. This is manufactured by MEN in Germany to M193 specification. Generally speaking, most 55 grain FMJ tends to fragment nicely even at 223 velocity, so this ought to perform pretty well. The fact that it's widely available at around 31 cents per round makes it an attractive choice for building ammo forts. If it fragments reliably and penetrates adequately, it can take its place alongside M193 from Lake City, Pervy Partisan, and Wolf Gold as one of the better choices for balancing terminal effect with cost to build a stockpile of ammunition for the end of days. Or, you know, shooting cans. But enough chewing the fat, let's bust some caps. Let's get out to the range and shoot MEN 55 grain full metal jacket from a 10 and a half inch AR-15 into calibrated 10% ballistic gelatin. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNBC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. Welp, you'll have to pardon the other two shots in the gel that obscure the disturbance here, but the high speed really told the true story there. As you saw, very clearly, the full intact bullet exited the block just above this clear gel catcher here. There was no fragmentation. It did, of course, yaw. All Spitzer shaped rifle bullets yaw. That is par for the course. You will not find a Spitzer shaped rifle bullet that does not yaw and usually somewhere kind of sort of around this range. The yaw began at around three inches as indicated by the disruption in the gel. It's easier for me to see the two different cavities because I can kind of move my head around and of course I'm here in person with my extremely high resolution calibrated Mark I eyeballs. But otherwise, this is very typical for a non-fragmenting, non-expanding rifle bullet. Mediocre to short neck, a fairly decent temporary stretch cavity at about seven inches by two and a half or three. It's hard to say for sure because again, there it does overlap a little bit with these others. But the main thing that we were looking to find out here is whether this brand of M193 is capable of fragmenting at this velocity. And we proved pretty conclusively that that's not happening. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> this is a pretty mediocre extra medium round when fired from a short barrel or at about 100 yards from a 16 inch barrel. Remember the 10 and a half inch muzzle velocity gives us a pretty good idea of what this or any other load would do at 100 yards, give or take, if it were fired from a 16 inch barrel. I honestly did expect to see similar performance from this load to what we usually see for other M193. As I mentioned, even most copper jacketed 223 pressure 55 grain full metal jacket tends to fragment. So I'm not sure why this didn't. One of the contributing factors could be the thickness and composition of the jacket. And some viewers will inevitably comment that the can ore wasn't sharp enough to start fragmentation. But I'm not buying it. The, the can ore is a knurled portion that encircles the bullet at the depth that it is intended to be seated into the case. The knurling looks like the edge of a US quarter or dime, and it exists as a place to crimp the case mouth into the bullet without deforming it. That allows the bullet to stay at the proper depth through rough handling and feeding in semi-automatic rifles. 
It is often said that the cantilever is critical to fragmentation. And it is certainly true that bullets that impact at velocities where fragmentation is limited tend to break apart at the cantilever. But I've also tested bullets that had almost no cantilever and they were still able to fragment. So it's not that I'm saying that the cantilever has nothing to do with fragmentation, but it's not the only answer. Now without fragmentation, this bullet is still yawing like all spitzer shaped rifle bullets and the neck was relatively short at only three inches. But as I've explained before, yaw is pretty weak sauce as a wounding mechanism. Yes, an early yaw rifle bullet will ruin your whole day, and it's a great deal better than any pistol round or a pointy stick. But you can plainly see on the high speed how underwhelming the temporary stretch cavity is when compared to other 5.56 millimeter. And the velocity was about as spicy as mayonnaise from this barrel. I mean, this is about what we should expect for M193 from this barrel length, but you'll obviously get more velocity from a longer barrel. And if I had to guess, you'll probably see reliable fragmentation and adequate penetration for this load from a 16 inch barrel at inside the house distance. That said, who cares? The point of buying M193 is for battling norks or looters or whatever. There are plenty of loads that offer good downrange performance at similar cost. Like, I don't know, almost any other M193. And there are lots of loads that offer outstanding terminal performance up close, even if they are more expensive. So for home defense, it makes sense to get top tier ammo because the price difference it doesn't really hurt much when you buy a box or two. So, I mean, I could retest this in a 16-inch barrel, but we already know that it's suboptimal at range, and you really ought to be using quality, high-performance ammo for home defense. So, is it worth retesting? What say you, dear viewer? I hope you found this video informative, or at the very least, entertaining. If you think I've earned it, Please help support our channel by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. That's not just some lame crap that YouTubers say at the end of videos. All those actions are forms of engagement that drive the decisions that are made by the algorithm. And because subscribing doesn't really mean anything anymore, please make sure to click the little bell icon so that you can actually be subscribed to our videos and get a notification every time we post. If you'd like to find out how to rent a Phantom V642 or other high-speed camera like the one that I used to capture the stunning video used in this video, contact Aimed Research. Their contact info is in the doobly-doo. I love you.